you're out on the golf course and you're not going to be, you know, dying out yep. there because you just had entirely too much and, yep. you know, you're out in the sun and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, this seems like a really appropriate beer for a golf course or any kind of event. Yeah. Even, you know, if you went to a ball game or something like that. I mean, this does have... Ball game, any outdoor activity. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play golf when I was younger, and I used to uh, play it when I... Four! Um, uh, I played it in New Jersey where I grew up, but predominantly I played it up on Cape Cod, which was really an interesting place because it was very... It's right. Everything is right on the water, which makes it a... Uh, What's the name of it, Dave, when it's on the water? There's a certain type of golf course where they, they have a term for it. A Lynx. A Lynx. A yeah. Lynx is, yeah, uh, is a on Lynx the water. A course is on the water. Yeah, and uh, I used to play a lot at a place called Chatham Bars up in Chatham, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. And I had a great time. And one of the things I loved about golf was just the peace and tranquility. You'll be out there and you hear the birds chirping. It'd be a nice summer day and everything's mm-hmm. quiet. Some beautiful landscaping, and and then then you shoot the ball and it it slices into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Say some That's choice bit, curse it, words. It, it could either hook or slice. Well, it, it hooks. To my, my, mine always sliced. Mine never hooked. <laughs> slices to the right, hook is to the left. Depending on if you're a right-hander or left-handed. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. All right. <laughs> so in, in my in my travels, I used to uh, stop at golf courses, even though I don't golf. And for a friend of mine, someone that had worked for me, um, I would stop and get them a pencil and a scorecard from each golf course because that's he collected those and felt that he wasn't going to get around the world to to get those. But I would get them, and and all these golf courses uh, were very accommodating. Not a one of them turned me down. They handed me a pencil, handed me a scorecard, and they, they knew exactly what I needed it it's for. It's advertising. It had their <laughs> yeah. name on it. Yeah. By the way, we, we usually talk about food pairings and so forth with this. And uh, the thing that comes to mind, because I've been at a couple golf courses and, you know, sampled the menu, and I always think about the club sandwich, like the turkey club with the bacon and the, you know, something light and refreshing, kind of fun like that. Well, so, yeah. Uh, honestly, having been uh, been out on the golf course and playing, usually around right after the ninth hole, you stop at the clubhouse, and that's yeah. the same place that you start. So you hit the ninth hole, and then you go into the clubhouse and you get yourself something to eat. Okay. Normally, what I get to eat is a hot dog, a bag of chips, and I get myself a beer, mm, and hot that dog. would be absolutely perfect with a hot dog, some mustard, yeah. bag of chips, you know, and maybe then, even and a then chili you, dog. Well, oh, you know, they, are, they have different toppings yeah. depending on the golf course. Depending on the golf course. Depending on the golf so, course. Some places it might have like forty dollar hors d'oeuvres. I don't yeah. think they have chili dogs here at the uh, chili dogs. Not a big Key thing West here. Golf course. No. I think it's just no, probably not. Hot dogs. Yeah. And you get mayonnaise, mustard. And, you know, yeah. The, the, hot the dog. Ketchup. Hot dog sounds right. Pizza sounds right. Pizza's good. Yeah. Pizza yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah. Club, pizza would be club great sandwich. With a nice light club sandwich. Right. And this it is a nice. Good. I, I like this beer. It's just like, you know, we've been saying. It's a very refreshing, fun, light beer, citrusy, you know? with with perfect frog hair in for, it. Perfect, perfect beer. For there's the no hair in this beer. There's no hair. In this, there's no <laughs> frogs there's no in this beer, in this beer either. Beer. <laughs> there are no no frogs it's in this beer. Only in the name, right? Yeah, I, I, I would probably be a little, say, yeah. little frog. <laughs> when, where when the frogs are safe. Frogs. Iguanas when, hanging out are the ones that are hanging out there. Um, you know, when yeah, I was golfing here. up the in Cape hair. Cod, yeah, iguana hair. We had we had we had frogs off of the course, and they'd be in these little ponds, and they'd make these sounds like, oh yeah, yeah. those dirt, big toads. dirt, well, that, dirt. That, you're doing that great first, at that. That's oh, amazing. We, we, we used to imitate them, yeah. By the way, that first noise you made sounds like your golf ball going into the water hazards. <laughs> oh, oops. You know, it's Boom. funny. Talk about water hazards. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with a guitar player by the name of Dickie Betts. Absolutely. I've been to many of his shows. I actually saw, uh, wait, wait, who is it? Who is it? Uh, B- Billy Bob Thornton played drums. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. my cool. God. With oh, Dickie Betts. All right. Well, if, for those who don't know Dickie Betts, uh, he's... Uh, he was the guy in the Allman Brothers who was their lead guitar player up until about 10 years ago. He wrote Jessica. He wrote Ramblin' Man and all that oh, stuff. Oh, Ramblin' Man's a great Elizabeth song. Memory of Elizabeth Reed. Ain't got no one to run with. Anyway. Does he have frog hair? No, but he's a he's an avid golfer. <laughs> he is. And he, lives, <laughs> he is an avid golfer. Okay. He lives over uh, in Sarasota County. Oh, uh, really? All right. Yeah, he lives in, um, what's the name of the town? It's the name of a bird. 
Albatross? No. Albatross. <laughs> Toucan. No. Albatross They're like an eagle. They're like an eagle. An osprey. osprey. He lives in Osprey. Oh, an osprey. Lives in Osprey. Uh, but there's a picture of him. Like, he's, like, just on the edge of, like, this water tra- water hazard. And about a, he, he, he's standing there like this, ready to golf. And about where Dave is, there's an alligator sitting right there. Ready. <laughs> That's a short distance. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Alice put. Cooper's an avid golfer also. Yes, indeed. Yeah, as, Which I think yeah. is outstanding. As is Willie Nelson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, don't go play with Willie Nelson, though, because well, you'd be too stoned to, to finish 18 <laughs> holes. Well, well Willie uh, <laughs> Willie shows up early every place he goes one day early so he can get a, game, a golf game in oh, and I then have his okay. concert. So, he, yeah, he plans that every, 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 every gig. Okay. What does he do on the fairways? Probably smoke. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that? He's, he's uh, rolling the fairways. <laughs> so what's what's that rolling one? Literally that? and metaphorically. country stars. I'm I'm not. I, I won't smoke. I won't. Uh, I won't. Yeah, something like I, I won't, won't smoke with Willie anymore. Yeah, I'm not going in his bus or anymore. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This is Dave Senior, and you're listening to Key West Beer Tales: The Sum of All Beers. A good beer, frog hair beer. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. And I'm also a fan of the fact that the guys um, who are running it are so enthusiastic about it. And I remember from from the get-go when you got it, Dave, senior, yeah. you, you were telling me how you know these guys are really, they're really, really into it and they're excited that we have it. And, yep. um, and you excited. told me today, because I was going to do a little bit of research on it, as I always do before the shows, uh, you said, oh, Email Kevin. He'll he'll get right back to you, and he'll call you if need be. And uh, sure enough, I I wrote him, and he wrote me this this nice little email back. I had it within I don't know fifteen twenty minutes, uh, and gave me all the information I needed for the show. So it was it was great. Yeah, I mean, great, wonderful beer, wonderful promotion, enthusiastic people behind it, and they're right on top of things. Got a Thank you, it. Frog Hair Brewing. Yeah, Frog Hair. All right. Cheers to Frog Hair. Cheers, Cheers to, to Frog, frog Hair. hair. As we said before, frog hair is a blonde ale, and from there we're going to be going over to a European lager, which is very well known and has a lot of mixed reviews depending on who you talk to, and we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, in all honesty, this is an excellent beer. Um, It's Stella Artois. Stella! 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 Stella. (laughs) Well, we now now we finally get the we finally waiting all day to say that that word. We finally we finally got the word of the day. Stella! Isn't it appropriate? Oh, it certainly (laughs) is. Very appropriate. (laughs) I didn't even think of that. Thank you so much. Oh, the screaming of Stella! But Stella is a uh, a beer out of a town called Louvain, Belgium, and it's a Flemish town. They've been in existence. The brewery has been in existence since thirteen something. That's a long time ago. Yeah, thirteen sixty six. It it wasn't always under the same name, but at one point or another, I think in the seventeen hundreds, the master brewer there was a, a guy by the name of Sebastian Artois, and he bought the brewery, and at that point he named it the Artois Brewery, and subsequently after that they had a Christmas beer, and their Christmas beer, they decided to name uh, because of the star, you know, over at Christmas. They named it, they used the Latin name for star and to name their Christmas beer, and then that became what we're drinking today. Oh, okay. It was, but it was originally a brewed as a Christmas beer. Hmm. I have to say the Stella uh, website is, is pretty crazy wild. It like, gives you no of, information. I know, I know, but they, well, you know, it actually, Why should it actually they have gives to? you, it gives you, it gives you, it gives, it gives crazy, you, crazy infor- cool like, stuff. Like, it gives it, you it all gives these you, recipes. Yeah, and it gives stuff. you recipes, it gives you gives you all kinds of information. Lots of videos. Except well, about the beer. To, There's nothing about the beer. Stella? Well, it's a Pilsner. It's a Pilsner. There's they, sh- a they show you how to shave the top, right? Pilsner, lager. Yeah, they shave the, and they the top of the bottle. Leuven. They, they, have a, they have a lot of um, videos on their site, which I think is cool. I, I, like, I like videos, you know. Apparently but I wish they, they had a video on the beer as opposed to, you know, what you can make with the beer. You know, you can... This is a dish you can make, or well, they they have the they have this like thing for the holidays. I just saw recipes for the holidays. Well, it's yeah. a twelve delicious holiday. But you don't recipes. find anything on the beer itself. <laughs> they have a chalice symphony where they, you know, Stella Artois. Uh, when you drink it, usually you drink it out of this like a chalice. It's like a shaped. It's it's specially made. Yeah. For the beer, I don't know what kind of 
you know, they call it a chalice. I don't know what to call it. It's like a snifter kind of, I guess. Or more like a wine glass, isn't it? Mm, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like a wine glass. Uh, I would say it's a cross between a wine glass and a pilsner glass. Okay. Yeah, because it has a, like a little bubble to it, you know? A little bit, yeah. But yeah. apparently they play them like, you know, they put fluid in them. Fluid in different bottles, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two Beer. Beer. There's Beer. a ritual. But it, it's funny. It has, because it's such a good selling beer over in Europe, it has a lot of people who don't like it. You know, if if people inevitably, if if somebody's a big success, they are, they're already going to have a certain degree of enemies. And I remember it was funny because I uh, I posted a beer, a picture one day in our backyard, and I had, I just thought it was a really good picture. It was a picture of the bottle, a picture of a, the glass, a Pilsner glass filled with Stella, and I got I got these these posts from people in Europe who are friends of mine and they said oh that beer's just no good you know it's just you know you, I, the thing is it's really good beer it's a really good beer another and the but you know people don't like it because it's successful another thing is that I was on I was on a site today and this one guy is saying it tastes just like Budweiser I'm thinking what, what what's he talking about and what I realized is that he's one of these new people to beer and he only knows the L side of things and because he doesn't know the lager side of things. He thinks it all tastes the same. And, you know, this is this is an excellent Euro, what they call a European Pilsner. It's, it's not a Czech Pilsner. And if you go if you if you go to Pilsner Urquell's site, they say that their beer and the German Pilsners are different beers that are on par with each other. Then after that you step down to a beer like this, one step. It's 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 recognized it's just not on the same level as the other two, and it's true. I I agree with that. But it's still, you know, on a scale of one to ten, it's an eight and a half, I think. My my pen. It's a staple. No, yeah. it's, it's yeah. a staple. Yeah, I and, mean, yeah, and even, it's, a, it's a go-to beer. For I a lot get, of people, I yeah. get a lot of, I get, I do get a lot of uh, of Europeans in, uh, and when they come in, they'll see Stella, and they will actually ask for Stella because it's familiar to them. Yeah, mm-hmm. Proud, not familiar is comfortable. Maybe not because that that's what they want, but it's familiar to them because everything else that they see. You know, and and I and I hate that. You know, I I don't mean anything bad against Europeans when they come over here, but they're not open minded to our beers. You know, over For in Europe, part. all the other towns. You know, all those towns in Europe, depending on what country you're in, everybody has their own. Um, what is it? Uh, brewery. You got breweries. You have um, um, all the different sections. You know, this yeah, especially this in town Belgium has and a brewery and, or how, yeah. wine. This town has a brewery or wine. You know, it's all like that. And the United States is starting to get that way. However, they're not opening their minds to in what I've seen in our customers that have come in. They don't open their minds to our breweries or our wineries. You know, I, I've had a lot of Europeans or even um, Eastern Europeans or uh, even South Americans or South Africans come in. And they won't order a particular wine or a particular beer because it comes from... Um, a region in the United States, they they order something that's familiar to them. Yeah, yeah. They it's a safe zone, right? It's they, like me if look... I go, if I go into a restaurant, like for instance, Danny and I last Friday, Friday Thursday or Friday, uh, we went went to a restaurant here. Thursday, called, Thursday, Thursday. Yeah, we went to a restaurant here, which you guys all know, but people on the air won't know. It's called Two Cents. Marvelous restaurant. Oh, it's wonderful. Whenever I go there, I always order the same thing, and the bartender there was saying. Before I even ordered it, he said, yo, look at the menu. You know, get something you've never gotten before because we have so many things. I just got the same thing I always get. Because, the muscles. Because, frankly, the muscles are, like, just spectacular. They're muscular. If you've ever, if you like muscles. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> if you like muscles. No, it's like in a curry it's soup. A, it's a curry soup. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah, it's a, oh. So I have that whenever I go. But it's the, the same br- mentality the bacon, that you're talking bacon. about, Dave. It's the same mentality. You know, you have a comfort zone. You know you're safe there right. as opposed to the experimenting. Once and you find your favorite dish or you find, you know, your favorite beer, unless you're actually, like, actively looking for, for new beers well, to well, try. Well, that's or... the weird thing. <laughs> that's the weird thing with me is that with beer, unlike food, in, like in the case I just, exa- I just talked about, mm-hmm. with beer... I come in here and I'm say, I'll, I'll say Dave Senior. I'll say Dave, what do you have that's new that I can try? Yeah, you're looking I'm, for that I'm, new I'm, one. I'm ready to. Wa- it's like walking the high wire is my profession as far as beer goes. Whereas going into a restaurant and ordering something to eat, then I'm looking for. I want to have make sure that I, I don't even have to have a net because I'm not going to fall. Right. You know. Right. But on the on the on the beer thing, it's always what do you have that's new? 
Well, you know, a lot of places you go, you get like a certain selection of beer, like uh, you know, Yingling Lager and Bud Light and blah, blah, blah. you know, it's just like the. So you know, it's like if they.